Today in the devlog, we have a specific request for um, some shader work. Now, we have, on the left here, we have a sphere that's got a custom shader on it. But the problem is the shader is unlit. And we're working in the universal render pipeline. The goal then is to take that same shader effect and just combine it with Unity's basic lighting shaders. Now, in the regular shader pipeline, the old shader pipeline, that was no problem. You created what was called a surface shader and just set the colors to that and it would work. In the universal render pipeline, however, it's really painful to create an HLSL shader that supports complete lighting. They really want you to move into the shader graph. So buckle up, let's go into the shader graph. <laughs> Step one of that process, we're going to, need to make a shader graph. So we're going to create a, oh my gosh, where are they? Shader, sh well, I want a shader, here we go, shader. Universal render pipeline, a lit shader graph. Okay, so my new shader. Great. Let's take a look at this thing. Okay, it's going to come up like this for starters. Um, you want to, though, render some custom code. You want to run some custom code that was in your old HLSL, right? Let's take a look at this thing. We have this old shader that we want to get working. And the meat of it here, there's nothing special here. The meat of it is in the fragment shader, it's in the pixel shader. Um, it's all here. The problem is the lighting code. Now you could, there's actually a way you can go and get all the lighting code you need, put it in here, but it's a serious pain. So I think it's probably less painful to go the other way which is right here. We're going to inject this shader onto the material. Let's create a material to go with the shader. Create a material. Create a material, my new material. And let's put the shader on the material. Let's put the material on our object. OK, so there's your default. It doesn't do anything. Um, but what could we do? Uh, here's our fragment. Here's our fragment shader. Right there, that's the color that's being fed into the material. Let's give it, uh, let's give it a nice green color. Boom. And we'll save that. And let's go over here and we'll see that that's, that's the color. Okay? So this is, this is your noodle graph, um, noodle graph shader editor for Unity. It's called um, Shader Graph. Uh, what we want to do though is we want to take that function we were just looking at and feed it in here as the color and then as you can see it's gonna be lit so all we got to do huh, all we got to do is take that one little piece of code and shove it in that node so what we do is we create a create a node and there's a custom function so I'm gonna, I I found that the search is your friend so we're going to punch custom function and now we will feed out of the fu custom function into there. So let's add an output. Output a float three, vector three. What do we call it? We'll call it out. And we'll just feed that right in there. Um, but we need a custom function. We're going to use file mode. Um, so we're going to need a new file. Create. Can I create a text? text file with this? I don't know. Oh, let's just use this text editor. Um, I got one here already. Let's file save as um, my custom dot hlsf. Alright, let's take out most of this. This is my custom hlsf. It's a good idea um, when using these shader uh, custom thing when using shader graph and you're going to use a custom thing to put a pound define protector on it because you can reuse the same thing multiple times and if you do you're going to get a compiler error so let's call this uh, my 
function float. And we're gonna do nothing but give me an output. We're just gonna take all this out. All we're gonna do is say out equals float three, one, zero, zero. It's giving me a red. Okay, so it's very simple. Um, let's hook that in now. We're gonna point to the file. Oops, we gotta point to the file. What I call it? My custom. There you go. So that's there, and I need to give it the function. I called it my custom, didn't I? My custom. Is that what I called it? No, I called it my function. My function. Give me it. Hey, and look at that. Hey, look, it's red. It's red. And let's save this asset and pop on back to the game, and we'll see it turned red. Cool. So now we have this thing and we can change the color. Oh, come on. We can change our code, pop back to Unity, boom, that works. So now all we have to do is take this original code here, take this code, this part, the fragment shader, and turn that into a custom function. So that's what I've gone and done. Um, I did that. There's a few conversions you need to make. First things first, all inputs need to go into the arguments like individually. We need to set those up. So let's let's try and just read out a texture. So let's, let's read in a texture. Um, so what are my inputs gonna be? I'm gonna have a texture 2D. Texture 2D main text. And I need a UV coordinate for that, so that's a float to UV. Let's read from that then. Um, let's see here. So we'll have a float three and four four color equals. And how do we sample from a texture? Um, you don't get you, you don't want to use the these symbols there's a macro that you actually want to use here um let's see here hold on i have one i'm gonna i'm gonna look ahead at what i did that's this thing so i already worked this out that's the lod version i don't need the lod version and, boom. and that's going to take the texture main text and the uv coordinate and then i want to use that for my output. Okay, so there's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a texture and a UV coordinate. I'm gonna sample the texture and just return that. I'm good to go with that. All right, but it's not happy because it's not set up right yet. I need to add some inputs. So right here, I'm gonna have my custom function. I need to add that input. The first one was the texture 2D bear texture 2d called main text and another input which was a vector 2 called uv all right and it's complaining too few arguments to macro call oh i forgot the sampler we need a sampler so let's add a bear sampler state I don't know, sampler state, SS, right? Let's put that next to the texture. Okay. Um, I'm going to fix it over here too. Sampler, SS. And that's the second argument to the texture sampler. Right, if you've written some actual HLSL, you know that sampling a texture involves those three things. You need the texture, you need the sampler, and you need the coordinates. So. That's the that's Unity's macro for accessing that. Hopefully that'll work. Um, it's still not happy. Unrecognized identifier sampler. Is it sampler 2D? What's the nah? What's it called? Sampler state. Sampler state is what I wanted. Sampler state. Okay. That'll fix that. Boom, all right. 
So now we're good here only back in game and it's back to white because we don't have any way to put that texture wait where's my my new material don't have any way to connect that to that let's connect it that's in here too so we will add to the inputs to the shader we'll put one right there, here I think yeah texture 2d and I'm gonna call it main text and we could set up a sampler but we'll just leave that one default That's, so we'll just take that we'll drag that here into our our little um, work area and let's connect that to our texture and I'm gonna need the UV coordinates uh, is that is that uh, I forgot where that was no, I think that's new node. I want to know. Yeah, create a node and I'm going to look for UV. Boop. I just want the UVs. So I'm going to connect that right there. And you can specify which UV channel you want. I just want UV to zero. Okay, so UV zero, main text, that's hooked up. Save the asset. Back to the scene. And now I should be able to select that table texture same texture that I was using on this material let's use it on my new material there we go tables albedo boom okay so now we have a custom lit shader that's using a texture um, all you have again like all you have to do now is transcribe all the rest of your shader code into your custom shader with all the inputs you're going to need so we've got the texture set up um and we got the well we don't need that but we got the where is the texture we've got the texture set up we've got the uv coordinates set up that's cool uh you need to add in the texel size it's going to need to be passed in um, this radius term needs to be passed in uh, and let's cut to the chase here I've set one up so put in what did I need the radius needed to come in um, and I've added something which I'll mention here in a minute so there's your UV coordinates um, texel width texel height main text sampler state and then the output I just called out uh, okay and uh, yeah here's something weird weird about these custom nodes you name your function and then you put underscore float but then when you refer to it here in your shader graph it is you do not put the underscore float you just take the underscore float off and put that there so the underscore float only goes in there not in here um, so here's all my inputs um, instead of a texture 2d I found that using the bare texture 2D works as with the bare sampler state. Um, and also, just now, I discovered that uh, to get the texel size, there's a texel size um, function in here that you can do. So, like, grab you grab your texture and you create node texel size and there was a texel size node right there so I added one of those um, that is the size of the texture not one over the size of the texture right uh, in the original shader original shader it calls for this macro uh, main text underscore texel size and that comes in as one over the texel size so um, to fix that in my shader, I just did that right here. Okay, so I, di I did that. Um, what else did I change? Uh, changed sample texture 2D um, LOD. Remember, you, ha you have to put in the sampler, and also the LOD macro requires the LOD to be passed in. And so I assume that means you want LOD zero. So I put that there. Um, and what else? Here's, here's the sample texture 2D with the sampler on it. <clears throat> Any other changes? Yeah, there's a slight change that I've made as an optimization. Um, 
I put in the option that you could have a different step rate rather than your radius because I noticed that your texture is quite large. You have a 2048 by 2048. Well, this texture that I chose is quite large. Um, let's, let's put my version on there. This is, I called it uh, shader test. We'll put that on there. Um, and so that's doing the same thing. Now I've taken this code and thrown it into that custom node. Uh, and it's pretty similar, but um, we have some options on here. Not my new shader. Shader test. Come on. Shader test. So steps. There we go. This is what I have on this one. On this one, it's got a radius. Take me to the unlit shader. The unlit shader, I have a radius currently set to 10. Uh, so I did the same thing then with this one. Set it to a radius of 10, but then I also gave an independent variable for the number of steps. So this is exactly the same. And let's zoom in here a little bit and as an optimization, what I've done here is reduce it to five. Um, and it looks very similar. Let's show that again. Here's the 10. Here's the 10. Let's reduce the steps to five. And I dare you to notice, right? It's very, very similar. Uh, and what I'm doing there is I'm saying, I want to I want to sample a radius of 10, but I want to do it in only five steps so i'm doing every other i'm skipping one on everyone and as you drop the number let's just drop it to two now you'll see what i'm doing you'll see that it gets kind of stripey although maybe if you want it to look like oil paint maybe the stripes is a good is a good look i don't know uh, you can explore something like that um yeah just tinker with it and if you want to try to basically it's just trying to optimize a little bit make it run a little bit faster so that's something that I did. You don't have to do that. I will show you my shader again so that you can look at it. This is the original. Here's my version. No. That where? Oh yeah, this isn't the original. This is mine. Here's the original. This one is mine. And so what did I do? Um, took the radius. I took that steps. You know, you don't necessarily need to do that. Uh, the UV, texel width, texel height, main text samper state and there's an output and then it's exactly the same as what you had I take one over for the texel sizes I calculated the scale right the scale is going to be the radius divided by the steps so if you set the steps and the radius to the same number then it'll be just like your old code on that I just multiply the scale on right there uh, and I changed, these were radius, I changed them to steps so that you can independently control those. Uh, everything else is, I think, exactly the same. This change to steps instead of, um, instead of radius, this is the number of, ultimately the number of samples that you do. Um, okay, and uh, that's it. Okay. So that's what I did, um, and hopefully that helps. Hopefully you can apply that one uh, on, on your game. All right. See you in the next log. Good night.